I'm Claire Graphic, Head of Exhibitions at the Photographer's Gallery, and this is the Dido Moriyama Reading Room, which sits at the heart of the Dido Moriyama Exhibition at the Photographer's Gallery on at the moment. It really is one of the most important rooms in the show. For Dido Moriyama, the photo book is really the focus of his work, and for him, the experience of visitors coming in, being able to pick up photo books, flick through them, and really experience them in the way he originally intended, um, it remains very important to him. This is a new edition of Provoke, which was originally published in the late 1960s. It was part of an avant-garde group of photographers, writers and thinkers that Dido Moriyama became involved with. He contributed towards books two and three of Provoke magazine. For Provoke 2, the new edition has kept this really nice magazine format and size. The series that Moriyama produced was called Eros. It featured an undressed female figure in a sort of mysterious, unexplained scenarios, including city streets, but also hotel rooms. And as you flick through the pages, you're not really told what the narrative or the story is behind the images. Moriyama explores the idea that the more consumerist society becomes, the more real desires are uh, supplemented for consuming of images. In Provoke 3, this one with the red, red cover, um, it's printed in this very beautiful, almost silvery, it's a sort of sugar paper, very matte paper. And we see in Provoke 3 this really interesting uh, influence on Mar Moriyama and his work of, of America um, and the sort of uh, pop artist Andy Warhol. Um, the series of images shows uh, black and white, blurry, grainy, in Moriyama's characteristic style of supermarket shelves stacked up with cans of goods. And if you think back to Andy Warhol's sort of valorization of the Campbell soup can, this really couldn't be further from the sort of glorified consumerism that Warhol was really uh, looking at through his work. In Moriyama, these images are grainy, hard to see, um, and the soup cans become incredibly abstracted through this very uh, contrasting print process. So this is a really, uh, really nice, almost pocket-sized um, version, more recent edition in, from 1995 of um, Daido Moriyama's first really impactful photo book called Japan Photo Theatre. This edition has a really nice soft cover which allows you also to, to flick through the images. It's a Japanese edition, so it's inter and is interspersed with these wonderful um, papery pages of text and these very different ways of printing his images, some, some of them very bleached out and contrasted and others printed in a more classical fashion, Japan Photo Theatre, published in 1968 um, and was the culmination of uh, a series of images that Moriyama took through between 64 and 68. And it intersperses more sort of classical style documentary work that he took in Tokyo, particularly focusing on uh, the community of avant-garde theatre troupe um, that he followed for a number of years. Um, but in, in Moriyama's classic fashion, this isn't a documentary project about a specific group of people. This is a really a project about photography and is interspersed with other images that relate to completely different things. There's aeroplanes taking off in the sky. Uh, there are uh, scientific specimens um, in bottles of formaldehyde. And it really sets the stage for the way Moriyama approached his work um, throughout his career, which is um, tripping us up and th making us rethink about what photography can actually tell us about reality. There's a distinct reluctance to offer a sort of linear narrative to any of his subjects, uh, bringing us back time and again um, to the image itself. This is a new edition from 2019 of Dido Moriyama's well-known photo book from the early 70s called A Hunter. It's published by Getsuosha and Gallery M. Um, it's a hardback book um, and beautifully uh, printed. A Hunter was really um, a really important book in terms of defining Dado Moriyama's way of working in terms of being an, a sort of itinerant photographer. 
enjoying walking around different cities in Japan. And a hunter was really the culmination of years of working in this way, working, taking street photographs, traveling, being quite an itinerant artist on the road, and was inspired by, um, in some part, by Jack Kerouac's book on the road, a very famous beat, um, beat generation uh, publication. It also created some of the most iconic photographs from um, Moriyama's career, particularly the, the stray dog image that he took, which became synonymous with him as a photographer himself, this idea of the stray dog wandering the streets in this itinerant fashion. Moriyama's work and thinking around photography is really shaped by him taking photographs, not sitting in a studio thinking about what he wants to do with photography, but just going out there. So a hunter would signify a way of working that carried through into his later career. And we see even to this day through his production of Record magazine, uh, which documents his, his wandering through cities, international cities, taking photographs of the things he sees. Farewell Photography was produced by Moriyama at a point where he felt a sort of crisis of faith in his medium, uh, the medium of photography and of himself as an artist, and was produced through him gathering up rejected photographs uh, from his archive and from his studio that were scratched, that were film ends, that were pieces of work he would never have published, handed them to a, an editor friend to edit into the book Farewell Photography. And it was really his sort of final farewell, he thought at the time, to the medium. Christopher Phillips, the photography curator, has quite nicely described Farewell Photography as the Finnegan's Wake of photo books. There doesn't seem to be any logical narrative to the work that you see, um, or any storyline that you can follow. Um, and it's really only on sort of deeper digging and revisiting that things start to emerge. It's a, it's a meditation on photography as a medium and as an object too. We're constantly drawn away from the, 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 the figurative aspects of photography to the, the actual material of the photograph, where we see the edges of the film, we see scratches on the surface of the negatives. 